start, and uh, we have a pl we have a pleasure to have Tayani Chang from uh, San Diego, who will talk about the permutation stability of Gregorch groups and other uh, branch groups. Thank you very much. Uh, the you stage for, is yours. Thank you for having me here. Um, so, so yeah. So today the the goal is to apply this uh, theorem of uh, Bekalovsky and Tom to show a uh, permutation stability of some exotic amenable groups. Uh, so this theorem uh, has been uh, presented and explained nicely in the lectures uh, in the past two weeks. Um, so uh, if, you miss, if, if you missed the lectures before, it's also okay that uh, today we're going to focus on proving co-sophicity of uh, certain IRSs and only in the end uh, apply the theorem to conclude permutation stability. Um, so let me remind you these uh, key notions here. Uh, the stability uh, notion discussed here is a uh, permutation stability. So um, you consider uh, the symmetric group N on N objects and uh, normalize the humming distance. So the distance between two permutations is one over N times the number of points such that uh, they are different. And then here, um, an, a sequence of uh, almost homomorphisms. So uh, let's take a group gamma and uh, let's assume it's uh, finitely generated. And then here, uh, a sequence of uh, almost homomorphisms means that you have, say, uh, phi n or phi nk from the group into the symmetric group. Uh, such that, uh, so um, if you look at uh, look at them on the generators, it's a uh, close to satisfy the homomorphism. So the d n of this uh, goes to zero when n goes to infinity for uh, the generators. And then p-stable means that um, if, if this is satisfied, uh, then you can find uh, honest homomorphisms uh, such that the, they are close. So if you uh, measure the distance on these, uh, for these two maps on the generating set, uh, it goes to zero. So this is the uh, notion of uh, permutation stability that have been uh, discussed in the past weeks. And uh, so it's, it's quite difficult to understand these, these such pro uh, properties in combinatorial ways, uh, but this uh, very nice theorem tells you that for uh, amenable groups, you can, uh, you can kind of pass the question on to uh, the study of uh, invariant random subgroups so it's an if and only if a criterion for finitely generated amenable groups. That's this notion of uh, being stable with respect to permutations is equivalent to the statement that uh, all invariant random subgroups are cosophic. Um, so this talk is actually about uh, invariant random subgroups. Only in the end, uh, we can pass from the statement on cosophicity to uh, permutation stability. Uh, so let me quickly remind you the notions around uh, invariant random subgroups. So here, let's take a G. Um, in general, you can take it to be a second countable locally compact, uh, but uh, we focus on countable groups today. But you can define uh, IRS for uh, non-discrete groups as well. And uh, so this uh, space of uh, closed the subgroups of G um, you equip it with uh, the Chabotti topology. So for uh, countable groups, it's just uh, inherited from this um, subsets product topology on the subsets. Um, and then uh, naturally G acts on its uh, subgroups by conjugation. So we say an invariant measure on this space, which is invariant under the conjugation is called an IRS. So it's actually a measure instead of a group, is a subgroup itself. 
And uh, here is a notion of uh, co-sophisticity means, um, so you consider all these uh, probability measures um, on the trouble space and uh, equipped with the weak star topology. Let's do all to the Chapoti topology on the space. And then we say that um, an LIS mu is cosophic if you can find a sequence of uh, say mu n converge to mu in the, in the weak star topology. And the requirement is that uh, each mu n is uh, supported on finite index subgroups. So here's the definition for our cosophicity. So the goal for proving uh, this kind of statement is that you take an arbitrary uh, IRS. So as we uh, learned uh, last week, that uh, you can consider uh, agadic IRSs that's sufficient. And uh, given such an IRS, you want to find a sequence of uh, IRSs supported on finite index subgroups of the group. Uh, such that uh, you observe a uh, convergence in weak star topology when n goes to infinity. Okay, so this is the uh, definitions here. So um, are we okay with all the definitions? Um, so if you look at this, um, these definitions and the theorem, uh, then ideally if uh, you are given some interesting group and you can classify all its uh, agotic IISs, then you can look at your classification list and check if uh, all these uh, all these IRSs show up on the list uh, are cosophic. Right? So you can just if you do have a classification, then the task is much easier. That uh, you can just uh, inspect all these things you have and uh, try to approximate by uh, IRSs on finite index subgroups. Uh, that's basically what we are going to uh, do today. Uh, so I want to say a few words about uh, uh, known results in the direction of uh, classifying IRSs. Uh, so the most uh, impressive theorem uh, that was approved way before the term IRS was coined is the neville stokes zimmer theorem. So it's about uh, connected centrally higher rank simple Lie groups. So they say that uh, if you consider such a locally compact group, then the only uh, agotic IRSs are the trivial ones that support that are um, delta mass on the trivial group or delta mass on the whole group. And then all the rest, they are uh, induced from lattices of, the, of G. And another way of uh, saying this is that uh, if you consider any probability measure preserving action of G, then it is uh, either trivial or free or uh, transitive. Uh, so, so this is the maybe the deepest uh, theorem that uh, regarding uh, classification of IISs. And in the amenable world, uh, the, there have been a lot of uh, work about uh, classifying local IISs in some locally finite groups. Uh, so we have seen before this um, uh, this uh, symmetric group. So these are the finite uh, finitary permutations. Um, Countably many objects. This was done by Vashik early on. And then um, you can also consider other kind of uh, locally finite groups consists of permutations. So there are these uh, block diagonal limits of the symmetric groups. These IISs were classified by Thomas and uh, Tucker Job. And you can also consider these, um, uh, these uh, permutations defined on a Bratelli diagram. And um, so these were considered in uh, Dadiko and Mendenitz. Since we're not going to use any of these, uh, I'm not going to spell out the details. I just uh, say that there are a lot of work in these uh, directions. Um, so, so the main tool I'm going to use is uh, what's called a commutator lemma. So also maybe I should say first, um, so it has been kind of a, a known by experts that uh, IISs behave, tend to behave a lot like uh, normal subgroups rather than uh, arbitrary subgroups because these invariant measures, they're not arbitrary objects. Um, 
that is, they tend to uh, share some more similarities with normal subgroups in many examples. And uh, that's uh, what, uh, so here we also observe something uh, very similar in that uh, spirit. Uh, so here I want to define the key notion here, so called the uh, uh, rigid stabilizers. So uh, let's consider the following setting. So you have some group gamma uh, acting on X. Here X is some uh, topological space, uh, say it's a uh, Hostov a topological space. And then uh, gamma acts by homeomorphisms. On X and uh, for what I do, I always assume that uh, gamma acts uh, faithfully. And then, uh, so the notion of a rigid stabilizer is the following. So let's take some uh, non-empty open set. And you can define the following object. So, so R for rigid. So these are the group elements uh, such that every point outside U is being fixed. So the I'm going, I always write uh, actions on the right. Uh, this notion this notion might sound a bit strange. Uh, if you haven't uh, heard of it before. So um, it, it's, it was a coined in the setting of uh, groups uh, acting on rooted trees by Griborchuk. And uh, so people who uh, people studying say homeomorphisms on R uh, tend to have other terminologies to describe similar things. So the picture here is, uh, so you have some set U in, in X and then the rigid stabilizer uh, it means that you fix everything outside and only uh, act inside you. So it's kind of a localized action only in, in you. And if you think about it, uh, for many familiar examples of, uh, say, linear group acting somewhere, then you tend to have trivial uh, rigid stabilizers. So having, uh, so say, for every open set U, this, uh, this subgroup is non-empty. It means that the action is kind of uh, locally supported. You can find locally supported permutations uh, everywhere. So this is the notion of a rigid stabilizer. And it's going to be a key thing uh, in, in the setting here. And then, uh, so there is this uh, very classical commutator lemma. As uh, so we're in this uh, setting above, so let's consider um, some uh, non-trivial normal subgroup. This is a normal and uh, non-trivial. Uh, so since we assume that the action is uh, faithful, so it means that uh, M must move some points in X. So if you have this, uh, if you have a normal subgroup like this, then uh, there must exist some neighborhood U uh, such that uh, N contains the commutator of the rigid stabilizer. So of course, if you have an action with trivial rigid stabilizers, then this statement is completely empty. So it's only interesting when the rigid stabilizers are non-trivial, of course. Uh, so this lemma, you can prove it as an exercise. It's uh, fairly easy. So the picture is like, once you see the statement, it's uh, very uh, easy to figure out. So things, uh, so it goes like this. So if you take some N that is non-trivial, then it needs to move some point. So let's say that you can find the sound element in N such that uh, it moves X to Y. Uh, this this uh, gamma uh, moves moves x to y. And then uh, since you x by homeomorphisms, you can find some small neighborhood around x that gets sent to a neighborhood around y. So this is my choice of u. 
So uh, the condition is that U and uh, the image under gamma, they are uh, this joint. And now you can consider the following. So let's take two elements in the rigid stabilizer uh, on, on this side. So you can do, say, the commutator between R and gamma. So this is in uh, this is in M because uh, uh, so and then you apply the the fact that M is normal and uh, this should be in N and uh, if you follow the arrows around it really the, is the same as just the commutator between R and S so the it only happens around X. And also, and then uh, this way you see that uh, every element here must be contained in N. So it's a very simple trick that you can, you just observe where points go and um, have this uh, inclusion of, uh, of a derived subgroup of the commutator into N. So sometimes it's called the double commutator trick. It's a very classical trick, maybe observed already in the 50s or even earlier. Um, so this lemma... You don't know that this uh, R gamma of U is non-trivial. All right, so yeah, so I should say, uh, so the, the statement is just uh, for any R and S, if you do this, it's in N. So if you take, trip, so the, uh, the statement is, is a containment of a subgroup. So if I take R and S to be trivial, uh, so the claim is that it is in N. No, I understand. but, may, but maybe maybe the, the rigid stabilizer is is it is the trivial group, right? I mean, right. Then then I just gave you a very trivial statement. Right, right. Okay. So it's only interesting when when it's not true. When you have, uh, yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. So you know, it's still correct that n contains the trivial element, but uh, it's only yeah, it's only useful when you start with an action uh, that the rigid stabilizers are non-trivial. Uh, so this lemma was uh, appeared very early and uh, it was used to prove uh, simplicity in many uh, well-known examples of simple groups. So, uh, so this, this uh, meta principle that goes back to Higgins's uh, simplicity theorems, uh, that, uh, so it's stated vaguely here uh, that, um, so if you have some gamma acting on X, that, uh, that is uh, sufficiently transitive and, uh, and you have uh, non-trivial rigid stabilizers in say all open sets, and then the derived subgroup of gamma tends to be uh, simple. So here are uh, sufficiently transitive, it's, uh, it's vague here. So the good model to think, think about is that the, you know, the favorite example of a finite simple group for me is the alternating group on N of chickens. And uh, so if you think about how uh, this acts on the N elements, uh, then it's uh, highly transitive. And you also, you have localized the three cycles everywhere. So that is the kind of what, uh, what, what it's aiming for, that you have transit transitivity, not just being transitive, but some higher uh, transitivity. And then also you have these uh, localized permutations then you tend to uh, get simple groups in this kind of a situation. So uh, another example of people that people used for kind of a, that is sufficient transitive is what's called a compact open transitive that you can uh, push any compact set into, uh, into an open set. This kind of uh, what's called a compact open transitivity. Uh, but uh, here, I don't want to uh, get into more precise statements, just to say that uh, this, this easy lemma is very useful in proving uh, simplicity in many situations. Um, so, so one example where it's not sufficiently transitive is a group acting on rooted trees. Here you see that it's not a primitive, you have a blocks uh, that naturally comes with the action. So, um, so in this case, so by rooted tree, I just mean the rooted tree. So here I just uh, I draw a rooted binary tree. So here is the root. Or you can consider other valency sequence as well. So in this setting, if you have say uh, some countable group 
inside z. So this I'm going to write it as t, or maybe write o for the root. Uh, let's consider the rooted tree automorphisms. So I include the root here to emphasize that uh, it's rooted tree, tree automorphisms. And uh, so let's take something like this, then you know that it has a finite quotient. I so just uh, by uh, projecting by projecting to uh, the rooted finite root tree. So we put a k here for the for the thing with the k levels. So here, uh, let's say here is the k levels, and you know it's residually finite. Uh, that you you go down the tree, you can uh, recover the group. And uh, so here in this setting, it's obviously not right to ask for simplicity, but uh, you can ask the next question. So besides these uh, natural finite uh, finite quotients, do you have other uh, significantly different uh, quotients? And uh, here uh, you can talk about, uh, so, so the, uh, maybe I uh, state the definitions first. So I just remind you that a uh, group G uh, say a uh, gamma is uh, just infinite uh, if uh, itself is infinite and uh, and uh, it's all proper quotients are finite. So at least for instance here, if, if gamma is just infinite, Acting on this uh, as rooted tree homo uh, tree automorphisms, at least you know that there are no uh, infinite quotients. So that's one step towards knowing all, all the quotients. And uh, and uh, so using this uh, commutator lemma, you can uh, formulate uh, so Grigorchuk formulated a criterion for a branch group to be uh, just infinite. So uh, let me just tell you what is a branch group. Uh, so remember that we have um, we've defined what are the rigid stabilizers. So on the tree, uh, you can consider the following. Uh, let's do, repeat my tree. Uh, so here the cantor set X is the is the tree boundary. So this consists of uh, infinite arrays from the root all the way to the tree boundary. And uh, so so the action of uh, of gamma extends continuously to the tree boundary. So we consider it as uh, acting on X. And uh, so for each vertex in the tree, let me take one here. So given a vertex, you can uh, consider it's a cylinder set. So if it's a cylinder set, you write as a CU, uh, which is just the part of the boundary. So it lives on the, on the tree boundary. And uh, it just uh, consists of uh, all these are uh, infinite rays with a uh, prefix u. And so it's just uh, the same here, but you can also think of it as representing the subtree hanging uh, with hanging underneath u with the u of the root. And uh, then you can consider so the notation is usually uh, say the rigid stabilizer of this point U, uh, but in, in the notation introduced before, it's just uh, uh, of this uh, cylinder set. So basically you consider uh, permutations uh, that only act on the subtree hanging on U and uh, nothing else. So the, the rest of the tree is completely fixed and the permutation only works uh, in this uh, in this uh, subtree at u. And then, uh, so with this, you can define the branch group. So we say uh, gamma is a branch group uh, acting on t on the rooted tree. If, um, so the main assumption is that uh, if you consider these rigid stabilizers, so for each level k, so I'm going to write this level k uh, lk, 
and you have the following thing uh, for if you consider on this uh, on this level you go through your vertices so here I mean that you look at all these vertices and consider the rigid stabilizer that only act beneath each point so you take the rigid stabilizer for each point and you take the so they obviously commute with each other so we take the direct sum and so this is mean that I, I took look at each picture like this and I'll go over a whole level and the and the requirement is that uh, this thing is a finite index in gamma and then another thing is that I want uh, gamma to be uh, act transitively so so this is the usual notion of uh, level transitive in a uh, rooted tree out in presence so this is the definition for uh, for a branch rule so so this uh, transitivity uh, assumption, it just uh, ensures that you're, uh, you really kind of move around on the whole tree on, on each level. And the main condition is that uh, it asks these uh, rigid stabilizers to be uh, of a finite index when you kind of uh, take the direct sum on each level. And uh, so it might look very strange to you if, uh, if you haven't seen this kind of definition before. Uh, so I think historically these definitions were made uh, kind of to capture certain good properties of the Grigocho groups. So um, we'll see some examples where this works. And uh, so the criterion uh, for so this uh, Grigocho criterion that I can state uh, is that um, this uh, a branch group uh, gamma acting on this uh, rooted tree uh, is just infinite. So since it acts level transitively, uh, it's infinite. Uh, so if and only if, so for uh, each any vertex U, uh, the this uh, rigid stabilizer. So we already uh, assumed that it's of finite. The, the rigid stabilizer is of finite index uh, in the whole group if you uh, sum over a level, and um, and the condition here to be to avoid the finite uh, infinite quotient is that uh, the rigid stabilizer, if you consider its abelianization. Uh, is finite. Uh, so if you know the if you uh, know the statement of the uh, commutative lemma, this is uh, not too hard to understand that uh, because you know for a normal subgroup, since gamma acts uh, trans level transitively, if you take a non-trivial normal subgroup, it's also it's not going to have a fixed point, and uh, you apply the lemma, it's going to uh, in to contain this uh, normal subgroup N uh, has to contain these uh, derived subgroups of the uh, rigid stabilizers. And then uh, this is exactly the right condition to guarantee all the quotients are finite. Okay, um, so, uh, so, so this, uh, so I think, uh, so I hope you have seen that this, uh, this classical lemma is useful for, um, for understanding normal subgroups and for, uh, for invariant random subgroups, there's a similar statement uh, that I found uh, about two years ago. Uh, so it goes like this. It's really very similar to the classical one. So the setup is, uh, is that gamma acts on X by homeomorphisms and gamma is uh, countable. I always assume that the action is faithful. And here for the, for the for, for, for the reason of uh, doing basic measure theory, I also assume that X is uh, second countable so that you can uh, use the countable base. And uh, of course, it's, uh, it's always assumed to be hostile. 
And the assumption is that um, for uh, the, there are non-trivial rigid stabilizers, and uh, moreover, that the inside the U, uh, the rigid stabilizer has no fixed point in U. Okay, so, so the assumption is that so this uh, this rigid stabilizer uh, has no fixed point inside U. Uh, so, so what's written here? So I not only ask for non-trivial rigid stabilizers, also I ask it to uh, uh, impose the assumption that it has no fixed point inside U. And then in this setting, uh, we have the following statement. Can you raise this? Uh, so take any uh, ergodic IRS of gamma that is not trivial. And then uh, for almost every subgroup, H sampled according to the uh, IRS. If you look at a point that is not fixed by H, then there is, uh, you can find a non-empty open neighborhood of V of X, uh, such that the rigid stabilizer of this uh, neighborhood, so derived subgroup is contained in H. So it's, it look almost the same as the classical statement. So except that uh, here, uh, the key difference is that um, for an IIS, it can select a fixed point sets on the- can you, can, can you put the slide that we can see it all again? It's to digest it all. So what's the assumption? Gamma acts accountable. And now, now you assume, now I see that you assume that the rigid stabilizer is non-trivial, right? right. So to have a, to have non-trivial statement. Mm -hmm. trivial and, 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 you, and you want to say what? That the rigid stabilizer has no fixed point in you? Oh, yeah, so this, this means it's a, a, so the rigid stabilizer of you uh, has no fixed point in you. Uh, so. If I take the some, some open set U and look at its rigid stabilizer, and I assume that uh, this subgroup is low. Everything outside, but nothing in U. Yeah, it's outside is completely fixed, but inside uh, there's no fixed point. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, and then the is that. Add identity, then for almost every subgroup. So if a point is not fixed by H, then uh, there is a neighborhood around it such that the derived subgroup of the rigid stabilizer is contained in the uh, subgroup H. This is a statement. Uh, this uh, containment is a statement. Um, so to so maybe say one thing here. Uh, that um, so, so here uh, there's one difference between a uh, subgroup uh, invariant random subgroup and the normal subgroup is that uh, so if you consider the following thing, uh, so you can have this map from subgroups to uh, say close the subsets in uh, X. The map is that you take H and then you consider as a set of uh, fixed points. And then this can be a non-trivial map. Right? So, uh, and you can push forward the uh, IRS mu to some distribution. Uh, maybe I call this map F. So, and with normal subgroups, typically you, you don't see anything interesting. So, uh, so for instance, in this uh, level transitive uh, example before, that uh, any normal subgroup, either it's trivial or um, if it's non-trivial, then it cannot fix any point. Uh, but with the invariant random subgroups, sometimes you can observe an interesting distribution 
um, uh, close the sub subset C in X. So, um, so this this lemma is useful in uh, classifying uh, IISs. So you can see uh, the step one is to figure out uh, what can possibly be a fixed point of edge. So you look at this uh, action of gamma on the space X and to consider uh, it's in uh, possibly it's uh, invariant measures on closed subsets of X. So these are these can be sort of as a possible fixed points. And then uh, once you have chosen your distribution of uh, fixed points, then this lemma tells you that um, if the assumptions are satisfied, then uh, there's not too much freedom in uh, what remains, that it has to contain these uh, derived subgroups of rigid stabilizers in the part that is not fixed. So this is, the, uh, this is how uh, this can be used to uh, classify uh, IISs. Um, so maybe I go straight to the, uh, so um, maybe I skip the parts that uh, maybe just say one word about it. Uh, so it can be, so the lemma uh, can be used to classify uh, IISs in many examples. So for instance, you can do uh, say, uh, topological full group of uh, CD actions. I'm not going to uh, define what they are, but uh, the, I want to say the thing, only thing I want to say is that the derived subgroups of, uh, of such groups, when you assume some, put some assumptions on the action, they are simple. So um, kind of uh, similar to the classical picture that is useful for simple groups. Here, um, we can also apply the lemma to classify uh, such um, classify IISs. And here you would see non-trivial uh, fixed points distribution because uh, any CD action is amenable. So you're, you're going to have uh, invariant measures. And um, so, but I'm not uh, going into that direction. Uh, so, so for trees, uh, this is the uh, statement that uh, it's not ideal, but it's somewhat the best I could uh, formulate at the moment. So, uh, so the setup is uh, that this uh, gamma is a countable group, and uh, it is in some is in a, acts as a rooted automorphisms on some spherically symmetric tree. Uh, so here, uh, it's it's okay that the tree has a non-constant valency sequence, but I ask it to be uh, bounded. Uh, so think of a binary tree for simplicity. And the first assumption is that uh, it is uh, just an infinite uh, branch group. So as you've seen uh, in this uh, pre virtual criterion for that, uh, the real assumption is that it's, it's, it's a branch group and also uh, these um, derived the subgroups of the rigid stabilizers. If you take the direct sum across each level, uh, it is uh, of a finite index in gamma. And uh, so there are two additional assumptions uh, so that the argument can, can work. So I'm going to uh, explain to you what they are uh, a little bit in a moment. Uh, so they might look a little strange, uh, but they are kind of natural uh, in the setting of uh, automaton groups or these are familiar examples of the groups acting on rooted trees. And if all these three assumptions are, uh, are satisfied, then all the IISs of gamma are prosophic. Uh, so I'm going to define uh, what do I mean by a contracting condition and a bounded activity in a moment. But, uh, but I hope you have get the definition of what uh, just infinite uh, branch group is. Um, so the first thing to say is that um, uh, this uh, set of groups that satisfy all these assumptions is not empty. So for instance, the first Grigorchuk group uh, satisfies all these. And uh, the, there are uh, two uncountable families of examples that uh, fit into this. I'll uh, tell you what they are after saying the definitions. As you might have noticed that I didn't mention uh, amenability in the statement, uh, but it's actually hidden uh, inside uh, that it is known that um, 
uh, in under these two assumptions, I didn't haven't specified yet that the group must be amenable. Uh, so, so we are actually uh, working with the amenable groups here. So it's uh, so basically uh, the, the situation is that these uh, these two under these two assumptions, uh, it fits into the framework of uh, amenability in this work of uh, Jushenko, Nekrushevich, and Zolata. We can also apply some earlier results to see that uh, these groups are um, amenable. And um, so if you go back to the theorem in the beginning, so we are looking at uh, amenable groups whose uh, IISs are cosophic. So by this uh, uh, beka lubosky tom criterion, these groups are uh, permutations. And uh, so, so I, so last week there was some discussion that uh, what, what is the situation in this? Uh, so there are examples of say intermediate growth groups that are obtained by uh, taking permutation with extensions. And uh, so it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's reasonable to think that um, together with the uh, wise approximation technique that we learned uh, from the work of Labeta and Lobotsky, uh, maybe this, uh, uh, the, the mechanism that works for the group and the wise approximation together uh, can be treated can be used to treat the certain extensions uh, that are known uh, that are people have studied before. And the more interesting question is uh, so here I only consider uh, branch groups, but there are these uh, uh, just infinite branch groups, but there are these uh, nice uh, weakly branching groups. The weakly branch, uh, it just means that uh, it is uh, level transitive. And you have this uh, weak, uh, weak condition that a uh, weaker assumption that the uh, rigid stabilizer uh, is non-trivial for every vertex. So in particular, it can have uh, infinite quotients a nice example of this is the uh, basilica group and um so so the the, the commutator lemma still works uh, here that uh, gives you non-trivial information that ISs contain derived subgroup of the uh, rigid stabilizers uh, but then the, the there are these uh, infinite abelian quotients that show up if you after applying the lemma so maybe uh, with the approximation technique uh, why is the approximation technique one can also treat uh, such examples, but I didn't uh, look into it. So um, it's possible that uh, one can have a, have a better statement uh, than, than this uh, with the known techniques so far. So that's, uh, any questions about this? Hmm. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, uh, you finished or you want to say something? Because I have uh, some questions. Uh, I want, I haven't finished. Uh, so, I mean, I want to explain to you the, uh, what these, uh, some examples maybe. Uh. Uh, okay, okay, so go ahead. I will ask you at the end, okay, sorry. I, I just wanted to ask these groups in the theorem considered are usually finitely generated or finitely presented? Okay. Oh yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, I think I, uh, so it, it doesn't have to be finitely generated. Um, there are some, um, so for instance, the easiest example is actually uh, just the, just the uh, locally finite group that acts on, on the, you know, the associated with these uh, finite tree, tree, tree automorphisms and take the direct limit. So um, it, it, it can be, um, not finitely generated in this uh, statement. And uh, I think all the examples here, they are infinitely presented. Uh, so usually they have some uh, tree recursion and then you, you need like an infinite set of uh, relations to describe them. Yeah, they're all uh, infinitely presented, so all the examples here. Thank you. Um, so, Right, so um, so it takes some time to uh, explain what these uh, conditions are, but maybe I just uh, show you some examples that uh, that it is uh, satisfied. So the um, so the most uh, the nicest examples are these are the first Gibbotu group. Uh, 
Um, so, so I'm going to just show you what are the generators. Uh, so we have this uh, A, so it acts on, on the rooted binary tree. I also have this A that uh, permutes the two subtrees. And uh, so then there are these uh, three elements that are directed to tree automorphisms. So this, uh, so this, this ray means the one infinity. So the tree is coded by left is zero and right is one. And then, um, so here you have the, uh, so to read this diagram, so it repeats uh, three periodically like this. And to read this diagram, it means that uh, if you say, if you start with uh, zero, Zero, uh, if you have a, a vertex whose address starts with zero, then if you act by B, it means that you come here and see that uh, it, uh, on this subtree, it acts by A, so the first digit is fixed. And then uh, after that, this X, you permute by A, so it means that you flip the first digit of, uh, of, the, egg, of the string after zero. And then uh, let me just do one more. So if you do one, one, zero. Uh, something with, uh, with B, then you enter the fixed point uh, that uh, here it acts trivially. So you just get a one, one, zero. And similarly, you define uh, C and D to be uh, these directed elements that um, You see the pattern is different, and it also repeats uh, three periodically. And uh, this is the last one. The D is uh, actually equal to C times B times C. Uh, so the, if you look at the product of the two, you would get uh, A and then it repeats. Uh, so here uh, you see, uh, so by contracting, uh, it means that uh, um, if you take any permutation, so contracting, it roughly means that if you take any element in G and then uh, there exists some sufficient level, so sufficiently large level uh, such that if you look at uh, what is the, what, uh, how does this uh, element act? So here uh, it means, so this, this symbol, uh, this notation means that you go to this level and you look at what it does on the, on the, on the vertices uh, in that level. And then tau is the finite permutation. So this is the uh, notation in terms of the recursion that for each element you look at uh, what happens uh, what is what what it does under the level, and then uh, what is the finite permutation that permutes the permutes the elements in that level, and then uh, the, the contracting means that for whatever element you start with, if you go sufficient sufficient levels down the tree, uh, then these uh, these sections they become simplified, and in this group it just uh, uh, end up in one of uh, these uh, of these uh, generators. So that's roughly what a contracting means. Uh, this a contracting uh, condition, and then uh, bounded activity uh, means that. Uh, so if you look at the number of uh, v in level k, that uh, g v is non-trivial. Uh, this uh, the supremum of this over all the levels is finite for each uh, for each g. So uh, so there are not too many. There are only boundedly many locations where the section is non-trivial. So these are quite natural uh, conditions in certain groups acting on trees. 
So that is the uh, two assumptions here. And then, um, yeah, so, so I think, uh, so that roughly explains why the first Grigorchuk group fits into the theorem. And you can also consider, uh, so it also applies, uh, applies to uh, say um, other G omegas where uh, omega satisfies so this is uh, kind of a positive frequency of uh, all uh, this is zero one two strings. So the the first group or two group is the it's coded by uh, it's defined by the parameter that is uh, periodic in zero one two, and um, so I think I don't need. To, uh, I I don't want to uh, go into how it's precisely defined, but it's also generalized to uh, other sequences of omega. So this is an uncountable family of uh, groups. And uh, you can also uh, apply to some uh, to non-constant uh, valency sequence. So you can define similar groups uh, that uh, where the tree valency sequence is uh, not constant. So for instance, it can, auto, uh, can choose two or three as a branching number, and you can define some uh, tree automorphism group pretty much in similar style to the Grigorchuk group. And um, that also gives you an uncountable family of groups where you can find uh, among these, uh, there are these um, groups of uh, exponential growth, but uh, non-uniform exponential growth. But there are uh, uh, people know uh, quite a lot of uh, examples that uh, that is that are branching and uh, satisfy the contracting and bounded activity condition. So that's uh, these are the examples, and uh, so I think uh, I think I can stop here uh, and uh, answer some questions. Thank you very much. Uh... I have some question, but uh, okay. First of all, thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know if some other people want to start. If uh, then just speak. I don't see you, so just if somebody wants to ask, I have a question. So maybe, maybe let me ask. I'm not. Uh, and then, uh, um, can you uh, two questions? First of all, can you remind us? You said something very quickly at the very beginning. When a branch group is just infinite, there is an if and only if condition for that. Right. Um, let's do to uh, Grigorchuk. Uh, so the so that's the uh, uh, that's helpful for um, it's, it's here. So. Um, if you have a branch group, it's it's just infinite if and only if that you look at the rigid stabilizers of vertices and the abelianization is finite. I see, I see. Okay, so that's uh, that's kind of a good int toward your theorem with the lemma. Now I understand. Yeah, because now, yeah, uh, if you have this, and then it's it's very helpful to find uh, uh, approximation supported on finite index. Right. Now, now I, I can see why this combined with your commutative lemma is kind of is on the way to prove the main result. So let me ask you something which I, I which I cannot see. You you work all the time with the rooted tree. Okay. I want to mention an old problem that I studied with Shachar Moses and some other people were interested many years ago, and it was kind of left left open. And maybe you have the machinery to tackle it. Uh, you yeah, we take say a, a k regular tree, and we take a lattice uh, there. Namely, uh, okay, you can think. Let's assume for simplicity that k is even. So you can think of it as the k graph of a free group on uh, k over two generators. Then you look at the full group of automorphism of this tree. This is this is a, a leak, this is like a locally compact group. By theorem of Tits, it is essentially a simple group. The gum, the 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 free group itself 
actually it by, by left translation, so this, and this is easy to see, this is the lattice there. It's a co-compact lattice. And we study the commensurability group of this lattice. And the commensurability group of this lattice was proved to be dense in the group. Now, this is like Margulis theorem, namely that if it's dense, we have to think about the, the lattice gamma as an arithmetic lattice. In fact, one can prove by, 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 by an application of Lighton theorem that all lattices, co-compact lattices are commensurable with each other. So this commensurability group is very naturally associated, associated with the tree. And at that time, we wanted very much to prove that that group is a, is, is a, is a simple group. Well, up to finite index. And we couldn't really, we couldn't really prove it. And, and that would be fantastic because this would be like, like the platonov Margulis conjecture for arithmetic group, that the, the, for lattices that the commensurability group is a simple group. And, um, and uh, well, we study congruence of property for this group. You, you, can, you can kind of invent arithmetic for that group. And Shachar Moses proved. Anyway, I think now that maybe you can prove it by your method and maybe even a stronger result that for that group, there are no IRS, that is like a simple group uh, because once this group is dense, you can sort of look at the stabilizer of one vertex because it's open, it's still dense there, then you can kind of think of it as a rooted tree and then it acts transitively on the, on the vertices. And I think that some of the conditions maybe can be proved and then I wonder. Yeah, so I, I tried the one non-discrete group before the narrating group of uh, almost the tree automorphisms. Yes, I'm sorry, say it again. Is this, this the group of uh, defined by a uh, narrating that, uh, that has the Hickman thompson group embedded. Uh, there, uh, it, it, I, I managed to understand how the commutator lemma works and uh, it has no IISs. It's compactly generated and uh, non-discrete locally compact group. It has no lattices. It was known before. Uh, right. So it's, it's, oh, and now you can, you can prove not, that it does not have any IRSs. Right, right. Uh, so, yeah, it might be, uh, I cannot say right now, but uh, it, it is possible that maybe there is something that can be- No, so, 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 here I'm, so here for the compact, for the locally compact group, probably there are IRSs, right? If you have a, let, if you have a lattice, you take an IRS for the lattice and you can kind of induce it up, right? Um, yeah, so the, the ideal thing should be similar to this, uh, this uh, Nabo uh, Stoke Zimmer theorem uh, that tells you uh, besides the lattices, you don't have other options. If the locally compact group have already, uh, you know that they. No, but, but you see, but there the lattice is a free group. So a free group has so many IRSs. That is the rank one situation, yes. Right, it's like rank uh, one situation. Uh, the other end, but still I think that the group I'm talking about of the commensurability group, which is a countable group, this might, you see, it's like the difference. What, what about a group like SL2Q, SL2Q, the, uh, the SL2 over the rational number, does it have IRSs? Um, I think the general thing is that in, in rank one, you have a lot of uh, exotic IRSs. No, but I don't think that SL2Q, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's not my feeling, but somehow I have the feeling that SL2R has many. Right. SL2Q is a discrete group. Somehow, I, I think... Um, yeah, but the free group has a lot of... <laughs> what? But the free group has a lot of... Uh, right, the free group has a lot, but it doesn't, but you cannot make an induction here, I think, I, I mean, at least, I don't know. Uh, you see, like, the free group is a lattice in SL2R. So you can kind of induce all the way to SL2R, but I don't think you can induce to SL2Q, no. but maybe I'm missing something trivial here, I don't know. I saw, I think, Arya Levit is with us. Maybe he knows too. 
the question to uh, the answer to questions like that. I don't know the answer to this question. It sounds interesting. I see. Okay. Anyway, I, I, I look at these old papers because I think I have the feeling that you, the, some of your technique can be very helpful to resolve this. And, and that's kind of, um, it's kind of a beautiful theory because it's creating kind of theory of arithmetic groups when there is no arithmetic, uh, there is no arithmeticity somehow. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, if you if you will know something to say, please write me. I, I, any other questions? Okay, if not, we'll finish for today. Uh, Gabor, Gabor uh, Kuhn is speaking next, next week. I see that, uh, yeah, Gabor, you are with us. Good, so you are speaking next week. Yeah. This still will be in the discrete world somehow, you know, connected with non-discrete, and then I, uh, I will send you soon a program. The month after that, there will be a lot of continuous things kind of will go to the to the unitary groups. I will uh, send the program very soon. We have, a, have some group actions on measure spaces too, at least on ultra products. So I make okay. the first small step. Okay. So you will be a good uh, bridge between the discrete and the continuous. <laughs> I try my best. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, so uh thank you tiani for your uh, lovely talk and thank you all and we'll see you next week